So in our last video, we just finished planting some tomatoes and corn. And I came up a few days later to check on things and noticed that uh, about eight to 10 of the uh, tomato plants had been scratched out at the roots. And we quickly determined this was an armadillo. So that really increased our urgency to get a fence put up. So that's what we spent the next few days and even some nights doing was, was putting up a fence. Um, also, during that time frame, we started noticing the some of the corn where we planted the corn. Some of the seeds were being pecked, picked off by some birds. So a few days later, after that, we came back, and it wasn't just a few seeds being picked off. It looked like all twelve hundred seeds that we planted were, had been picked off by the birds. There were holes everywhere through all of those rows. We did four 100 foot rows, 1200 seeds, and they were all gone. And that took, that planting of the corn took us probably three hours to do. And we were completely devastated by the loss of all of our work that we had done. We decided we weren't going to give up on the corn because that's something that we really love. It's really hard to find non-GMO corn and organically grown around our area. So we planted it. We decided we were going to plant it again and we had a new game plan this time that you'll see later on in the video what we decided to do to make it more effective and to combat the birds. Before we replanted the corn, we covered up the rows with some black silage tarp just to furthermore kill the weeds and, and get it more prepped for planting again. And while we were waiting for that to run its course, we, as you can see here, we're planting two more rows of tomatoes. We are going to work on planting sweet potatoes right now. and. I'm using our handy dandy measuring stick. This is what we use for the corn. Cameron made this. And when I first saw it, I thought he had um, markered these little marks, but it's actually, he inlaid some little pieces of walnut in there so they never fade. In my home garden, when I didn't have a lot of space, I put my sweet potato plants one foot apart, but I'm gonna do one and a half to two feet apart here. I'm going to be down with the chainsaw opening up our driveway. Becky's going to be up here planting corn. Today. Yeah. And Karen made me a new corn seeder, which I'm going to show you because it's really cool. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> we have our happy children here today. <laughs> it's, it's, it's first thing in the morning, and so they are halfway asleep still. This is the cedar that, well, hole puncher. Hole punch, yeah. Yeah, doesn't do the seeds. Corn hole punch. Um, but we spaced it six inches apart because that's how I space my corn and then I thin it out. So eventually it'll be 12, 12 inches apart between the plants. And then uh, you put it down and you step on it. But I'm not in the row, but it's we tested it out and it actually works good. Cameron's amazing. Just Make sure it's it. straight. Whoa! <laughs> not still. You just, yeah, you just step on it. I'm not as uh, heavy as you are, I guess. It worked better with you. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of a hilly area. And then the result should be a bunch of holes. Yay! Yep. It works. Cool. This is much easier than bending over for 800 times. 800 times. We'll still have to bend over to put the seeds in, but yeah. my goodness, that's easier. <laughs> oh, I can see where the old seeds holes were from the birds. 
In order to plant the corn a second time, we had to order some new seeds, which is why we had a little bit of lag in between planting, but it actually worked out well because the silage carps killed off all of the weeds that were there. So we had a nice empty rows to start with. And instead of planting four rows like we did last time, we decided to just do three of our 30 inch wide garden rows. And in each of those 30 inch wide rows, we can fit two rows of corn. So in total, it was actually six rows of corn and it ended up being about 800 seeds. So our plan of attack to protect the corn now after we planted it a second time is to repurpose some of our low tunnel support hoops. And so you see the kids here pounding in rebar and we're placing these hoops a little further apart than we usually do uh, just to make sure we, we can span the entire row of corn. And then once these are all placed, we will drape some netting over this to keep the birds out, but also allow the corn to start to grow. So we ended up with 25 foot by 25 foot nets, which spanned all the way across the rows. And that worked really well because it kept the nets high enough off the corn with those PVC low tunnel support hoops. And these nets are really stretchy, which also worked out well. And then we held them down with the sandbags. So after we planted the corn, the next thing that happened was we have zero water up at our land. So we did have a well drilled, but there is no well pump installed and we don't have electricity to run the pump yet. So we have been hauling water from our house all the way up to our land and garden to water every time it needed to be watered. And at this time it was 90 degrees every day and it did not rain for I want to say almost five weeks there was no rain so we were bringing water all the time up there so even though this process looks fairly quick it did take us a really long time to water every time we needed to water the corn the corn alone took us between two and three hours to water just depending on how many of us were there and then we would water that one day and then we would come back on the next day and water the other plants and the thing that really saved us was we put down mulch the second time just a thin layer of it and that kept the soil surface nice and protected and it didn't dry out as fast so even though we were going through this period of no rain and not watering like we should, the corn still ended up sprouting in the end and the nets did work against the birds. We didn't have any losses from the birds once we put up the nets. 